Lord God, I bless you, I bless you, and you, you, tuning in, I bless you. I bless you. I want you to know that I bless you. Even if I'm fuming mad at you, I bless you. Please understand that. And I got that from our Father. I'm talking about our Heavenly Father. I got that from Him. I'd like to say I got it from my big brother, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus, the man born of a virgin, Christ, Messiah, actually walked the earth fully God, fully man. Yeah, I, I'd like to say that I got it from my big brother, Jesus, from my Savior, my Lord, Jesus, from the high priest, Jesus. However, it's God the Father who gave that to me. Now, what he showed me about it is, you want to bless. You know how in Proverbs he talks about uh, do good to, to your enemy. And, and don't wish ill on him because he'll shorten, he'll shorten, he'll shorten their judgment. I want to turn to the scriptures right now, but the message today is stupid stuff. And maybe the first part of the first part of the title should be rightly dividing the word. Cuz all I ever want to deal with is the word. However, when you deal with the word, you have to deal with mankind cuz we're who he gave the word to. Now, we're not all that he gave the word for. And if that confuses some of you, maybe I'll connect the dots a little bit later. But we're, he gave his word to us. He wants us to understand his word. And even while I'm in that, I will bring to you the understanding of some things about his word, even though I might not connect the dots today. I have before, and I have courses on it. However, language has to do with consonant, vowel, and breath. Language. Now, God gave word and words. I have a whole course on that, 10-week course on that. They are not necessarily the same I don't want to say the same thing. However, for example, Psalm 119. God gives 10 different words, if you're looking in English, for word. I have a whole course on that. Some of them are precept, way, ways, commands, okay? And each one gives a different aspect of his word and some of them have promises to them that are different than another aspect has word okay go to psalm psalm 19 if you want god's commentary on word his word in particular However, now, understand that as God gave his word, he, in language, that he gave man language. You remember, he had to confuse the languages, Tower of Babel. And uh, in giving word, in language, there's sound, there's breath, there's consonant, and there's a vowel. Now when we teach, and, and I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a special, I was trained as a special ed teacher, one of my trainings. And I have always minded the way, at least in America, that we teach. And at the same time, I think it's wonderful. It, uh, God shows us how 
human beings learn. And the way we teach doesn't have to do with the way human beings learn. One of the examples that I'll give you so that I don't have to go into a whole lot of it ex- explaining is that you who are looking, you who are tuned in right now, people of excellence, I always remind you that you're people of excellence. If you tried to learn a language right now, some of you it's a piece of cake. Others of you struggle with it. But all of you know that children can learn a few languages at one time and it is no problem. And yet, by the time we get to teach language in school, it is so hard. I will tell you this. I don't know if it's exactly when I got saved. I'm pretty sure I was working at the Institute of Human Potential and Development before I got saved, but I had been translating the Pentateuch. I did not know that until after I got saved, but I had been translating the Pentateuch a good year to to, two years before I came to know the Lord. And I was... And not not to try to know God. I was not looking for God. I was looking to prove that religion is just man-made in order for man to control man because man uses religion to do that. That's not God's purpose. However, I began to see in the Pentateuch, not knowing I was translating the Pentateuch from Coptic to English, that God gave man to understand and the way the vernacular was back then in stages. And he gives pauses. Some of you may recognize that God will give you revelation on something and it's so wonderful and it fills you up. And then as you receive that, you get more revelation on the very thing that he gave you revelation on. God teaches that way. We, we, I think we think we teach that way when we teach ABCs and all of that. Now, getting back to language. Breath. God gave breath. And man became a living soul. That's the first thing we know about breath. In order to speak or give words, you have to use breath. Words are supposed to give life. That's part of why the scripture tells us, though we take it so negative, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And the rest of the verse that says about about the person who lives by it, it's not so negative as we make it. But life and death are in the power of the tongue. I want to look these scriptures up. I want you to look them up. Remember, I always tell you that God is his own best commentary. You look up the scriptures when a preacher or teacher or someone is giving, or even when you think of a scripture, I I think, and I know God taught me this for me, that when you think of a scripture or hear yourself referring to scripture, look it up. Now, it doesn't mean you have to look it up that minute, but do look it up before you forget about it or get on to some other scripture. Uh, on another subject, another day, another time. When we refer to things, God wants his word standing up in us, representing him, and also activating and actuating that which he ordained for us in the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Now, right there, I just messed with with some of you who have all these different doctrines that do exist on predestination. Whatever your doctrine or ideology is, whatever your teaching or learning is, do understand that it is God who ordained things predestined in the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the earth before either one of us got here. So if you want to talk about my predestination and your predestination, you're going to have to go back further than what you even know how. And that's even if you are full of the word and know the word. 
because he's going to keep giving you revelation on these things. Wisdom lets you know, in Proverbs, wisdom lets you know that wisdom in the feminine, by the way, was with God before the earth was inhabited. So for those of us who want to get stuck on doctrine about no new thing under the sun, first of all, it could be new to you. (laughs) Just because it's not new under the sun doesn't mean that you knew it already. However, God says to seek wisdom and he promises that he'll give it to you liberally and he won't fuss fuss you out uh, for asking. Wisdom says, I'm going to show you witty, witty inventions. I'm going to show you some things. Now, wisdom being here and being with God from the foundation, from creation, from before the earth was inhabited, has some things to show you that are even beyond what we like to call creation. And I say what we like to call. Because, you know, I have my degrees and got learned it in college and all of that. However, um, I've, I have learned from the best of the best that what we like to call creation, we're really talking about earth until we realize that, oh, there's space. And now we know that there's outer space. And now we know that there's more than that. And so we don't even know how to go back and, and change the things that you can still find in the encyclopedias, the things that I was taught in my lifetime much less the things that my mother was taught or that her mother was taught or that her mother was taught. And I'm, I'm speaking mother because, remember, wisdom is in the feminine. <laughs> I'm not going to connect the dots for that one right now. I want you to know that stupid in Strong's Concordance, and I would say look it up from the book and not just from the the uh, uh, internet. It's the word for fool. So I want you to know that when I call something stupid or say something is stupid, I'm speaking like when Jesus said, you fools. Because sometimes we are being stupid. Now the way that the word of God defines stupid, and remember, I always teach you, this is what I give you what God gave me. Look up, take your strongs, look up everywhere God uses that word. And when I say that word, I don't mean just stupid or fool, because sometimes it's a different word translated fool. Than in one scripture, than in another place. That's with any word. It can that can happen. So find where God uses the specific word in the original language that you want to know the definition. Find every place that He uses that word. Read those scriptures, and you'll have an idea of the definition or what God means when He's saying the word. And I promise you, you'll have an idea. Because remember, God will give you revelation. And then he'll give you more revelation as you understand and as you're able to receive and as you're able to put it in place. And as you go through experience, it matches your revelation. That helps you have more revelation and understanding and knowledge. And if you didn't recognize the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I want to look it up to make sure the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. It's not all of knowledge. It's not all of wisdom. It's not all of understanding. But the fear of the Lord is what we need to encounter these subjects, to encounter these philosophies and ideologies before you even get there, to encounter God's word from his mouth. The faith chapter, Hebrews 11. I think 11.3. Ah, I thought I put it on mute. (laughs) The faith chapter, it tells us through faith we understand. Now, I used to think through study you understand. Well, you can understand some things. However, when you look at the way God uses the word understanding, he's not just talking about 
piling up knowledge and piling up notes the way the way that I, I the way that college was study a lot of stuff you know 350 pages uh, of reading per per college hour you need to read a lot of stuff and you do I'm I'm not against study I love 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 to study however when you rightly divide the word of God rightly divide pardon me the word of truth that's another important thing about God say what he says and that's why I say look it up because we we um we memorize things in a way that we understand that doesn't make it wrong doesn't make it right and we want to say what the word of god says second timothy 2:15 i believe is what oh i went oh please i'm i'm trying to get there i don't want to rate you okay there we go i hit chronicles Second Timothy two fifteen is I think is where I want to go. I, I tend to mix up two different scriptures. However, second Timothy two fifteen, study. That's work, okay? To show thyself approved. Remember all those doctorates and degrees that I have? Unto God. Not unto your college, not unto your professor. And that doesn't mean not, don't do it, don't do that. He's letting you know, study to show yourself approved unto God. And then, as if study isn't already enough work, he's letting you know again. A workman that needeth, and I always let you know in King James, ETH means it's, it's, it's a, a, a part of speech we don't have in English. That it, it was, it is, and it, it's ongoing. That needeth not to be ashamed. You didn't need to be ashamed. You don't need to be ashamed now. And you don't need to be ashamed in the future. And here he's, it says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now I can connect a whole bunch of dots to let you know that Jesus is the word and Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. However, now watch this. Watch this. God doesn't give us warnings that we don't need. As a matter of fact, I I would like to let you know that if you study it out, you'll find out God gives us warnings that we actually need. I, I, I mean that warnings because we'll do the opposite if he hadn't told us. But he tells us, but shun profane and vain babblings. I, I want to look it up, but I won't now. You can look it up. But there's a scripture that says yada yada. That, that's us saying blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's the Hebrew expression of blah, 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 blah. Yada yada. <laughs> Shun profane and vain yada yada. Blah, blah, blah. Babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now more means that, that that's where you already started. We have so many conversations and things that we just want to study up on. And I almost don't want to do this, but I I'm, I'm going to take you I'm going interrupting myself to to take you to another place about this study to show yourself approved unto God. Not to me, not to your brother, not to your sister, not to your denomination. And their word will eat as doth a canker. Or put in there the word cancer, because that's what canker is like. And their word, he's letting you know, shun profane and vain, yada yada, vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker. And then I, I want to deal with that, but I'm going to show you this. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Philetus. Watch this. 
who concerning the truth, now he mentioned the truth, rightly dividing the word of truth, who concerning the truth have erred. They're mistaken. Saying that the resurrection is past already. And watch, overthrow the faith of some. Now, I want you to understand, but there's so much I want you to understand. I bring the word to for us to understand. We are right now living in times where this is going on big time. There's never a time that this stuff didn't go on. Uh, however, one of the things that I want you to see right here is the word named names. He said who he was talking about because he wasn't talking about them and they. The them and they goes on. Yes, it does. They say this and they say that and according to them and all of that kind of thing. And (laughs) whether it's now for the pandemic that's been going on for these last few years or whether it's uh, what was going on a hundred years ago and and about those things we go through stupid stuff foolish stuff we human beings and including the people of God if you look at uh, at people of right now living right now are probably aware that the 1950s was uh, cars were a big deal a big thing and depending on what generation you are from the 1950s on or even back, you have different kinds of opinions as to the teenagers or the young people and the this and the that and the cars. However, you still understand that in the 50s, there were lots of cars, lots and lots and lots of cars. The thing of it is, you can go get some newspaper clippings and look at newspaper clippings and know that in the 40s, People were upset and mad about this car stuff. And the same way people are now, upset and mad about uh, the electronic cars or um, the infrastructure that had to happen for cars as opposed to horses. People were fuming mad. And during that time, uh, tuberculosis was happening and people were doing the same thing that that this pandemic has seen people um, uh, coming up with solutions, drinking alcohol. I mean, pardon me. I do mean alcohol, but (laughs) I don't want to explain all that. I want to say that we do stupid stuff. Foolish. Now, when you look at all the scriptures where God uses fool, the fool is someone that only hears himself doesn't want to believe anybody but himself and anybody that agrees with him and will argue. And this is part of why in this scripture about rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, 14 and 16, he says, shun profane and vain babblings. You don't even know you're babbling because we think we're so right about what we're babbling about. However, let 10 years go by, the 40s, the 40s of the horses, to the 50s of cars everywhere. And and right now, without looking it up, uh, um, I can't give you the dates, but most of us know Colonel Sanders. Well, the infrastructure that happened that, that put him out of business on his original restaurants, it put a whole lot of restaurants out. And people were fuming mad over the infrastructure that the government was doing. I don't even know if we got the term Big Brother then. I think we had. And we were, you read the newspaper clippings and people were few, people of God. Fuming mad. And... Some, uh, they lost their businesses. That happened. That happened in, in, in my adulthood looking at, I don't want to name the store, uh, but supermarkets were already here and had already done that job. And then one particular, uh, I don't know if, you know if it's right to call it department store because I'm, I'm from that age of where the department store, I don't even know if it's called department stores now. Uh, but one particular store 
would take uh, uh, such low prices I sell and and put all the fabric stores out of business and 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 then once they're out of business didn't even carry the things that you would go to that store to buy cheaper right now I was looking for a fan my 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 fan didn't want to work right anymore and I go to that store to to find a fan instead of the hardware store that when I was not even as far back as in my teens, and I'm older than most most of you think I am, but in my lifetime, I'm letting you know things have changed. And the ways that we think, people of God, intelligent people, responsible people, has a whole lot of stupid stuff and vain janglings. And the word lets us know it started ungodly. When we're not doing what Ephesians calls edifying, building up the body and and moving in the love, the, the height, the length, the depth and breadth of the love of Christ, when we're not moving in that, it's vain janglings. When we're not moving in that, we're being foolish. We're listening to ourselves and not the word. We can, we can know things. George Washington is, uh, was the first president of the United States. That's not scripture, that's not word, it's history. You can know things that are true. You can know, you can study. You know what else? You can know things that aren't true that you were taught. When I was coming along, I think I was still a teenager, um, King Tut's tomb was discovered and oh my, it was wonderful and, and we have a museum and all of this. And by the time I think I was in my 20s, now from teens to 20s, it's kind of like uh, what I'm telling you about going from the 40s to the 50s on how few and mad we were about cars in the, in the 40s. And, and you can see it in the newspaper clippings. The same way that, uh, who was it that said about airplanes? If God meant for a man to fly, he'd have given us wings. Well, <laughs> now we're in a time where we have airplanes going everywhere. Now we have a different problem with 5G messing with the airplanes everywhere. <laughs> By the time you get to the time that you can look back, we don't even remember unless we've been rehearsing the word. If we keep rehearsing our babbling and our vain jangling, we have we don't even know we're being an abomination. <laughs> there's there's a, a proverb that tells us these six things doth the Lord hate, and yea the seventh. And if you understand Bible numerology, not man made up. The seventh is an abomination to him. Now, who of us are believers who name the name of Jesus Christ think we're being an abomination? Certainly not on purpose. However, God says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, the seventh is an abomination to him. And the seventh, he goes through them. And the seventh, he that sows discord among the brethren. Now he, I'm letting you know that when you study to show yourself approved to somebody, you you need to make sure that it's that you are keeping that connection with God. I'm not saying don't get your degree. I will let you know that it's a lot of dung. Good for fertilizer. <laughs> the Apostle Paul. God used for so much of the New Testament. He was studied, studied under the best of the best of his day, of his time. A Hebrew of Hebrews, studying isn't wrong. However, knowledge can be a weariness of the flesh. Do it in the fear of the Lord, and it's going to have you know what you need to know 
so that when the revelation of things comes along, the word in you, that maybe when you read it, you didn't get it, you didn't understand it, but God's word is in you, it stands up and you understand. For example, physics is part of something that we should know and have, just like a child can speak languages. But, oh, we made it so hard. And I'll interrupt myself again to tell you that uh, I'm, I'm so sorry that the library in our town is closing, and I want to get the books. I used to always tell people that when you really want to learn something uh, that is considered a hard subject or uh, uh, taught in college, go in the children's section and get it. Because the way we teach children, we stop making it. We usually stop making it hard. Now, I'm of the opinion that the way we teach children to read is hard. And I proved that all through my 20s. I proved that even in when I, my late teens. Because I would teach people to read, teach children to read, toddlers to read. And it wasn't C. Dick Run. It wasn't learning ABCs. It was what I saw in the Word and saw that God made our minds able to put things together. And even as you see, I'm putting my fingers together and they fit. God does that. There's so much he gave us examples of in our body. And things come together so that the sounds of words come together. And so I would, I have a method and I would teach children to read. And people, when I would let people know that my children at two could read, and, and I don't mean see Dick run, I don't mean that, could read. As a matter of fact, when we had to catch the bus, they would read the, the, the advertisement signs on the bus because they learned the vowel. The, the, the sound, ah, oh, ooh, expresses the heart of God. It actually expresses what we like to call emotion. However, where science has learned um, biophysics and neuroscience, we've now learned that emotions are more than what we thought they were. And if you go to Colossians 3, set your affections on things above, you find that emotions are part of affections and they do need to be set above because there's no, there's no reins for them here on earth. There's not control. That's why we get out of control with our emotions when we just let ourselves go. However, if you set your affections... And emotions are part of affections. If you set them on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, your affections are seated. They're not flying off. You know that expression we have, flying off the handle. (laughs) They're not flying off. They will move to where the word of God will transform them for his purposes. And... Sometimes the purposes are to enlighten. Sometimes his purpose is to judge. You know that thing, that phrase that he used with Abram, the time of the Amorites is not yet full? If you've gotten, if you've sinned and sinned, or you're babbling and babbling and babbling so much, and won't take correction and won't seek wisdom, there's a point at which God says, enough. Remember Simon the sorcerer in, in Acts when he wanted he wanted the, the to pay to be able to get people to get filled with the Holy Ghost the way that they were doing, and Peter let him know to pray because you're you're in huh, the condition that he was in. You don't recognize it when you're being stupid. We don't. We don't recognize when we're being foolish. Peter told him what to do. 
And what he said is, you pray for me. Peter let him know, you pray. And he said, no, nah, you pray for me. And I'm, I'm not saying he said, no. Nah. I'm letting us know that God has told us what to do in so many places. And yet when we're praying, just listen. Next time you're in prayer. We are so telling God what to do. Some of it he told us what to do. And then he lets us know that that he's the potter, we're the clay. The clay doesn't command the potter. He lets us know that. And I remember... Uh, a, a big television ministry that was on TV and the wife had this big revelation and she was making it that God saying that was saying command ye me you can look up that verse and read it for yourself and she made it like she had the revelation that God is saying command me <laughs> read it just this week I'm listening to more than one preacher telling you to send for this oil. You want to check out the scripture that they're giving you. Because one's been doing it for before since before I was saved. The 60s. And I didn't know that a couple others started doing it. Look up the scripture that they even tell you to go to. And God says, don't make that oil again. God says, don't do it. The oil for, uh, for anointing Aaron into the priesthood. Look it up. And here they're selling it. And they're telling you it's going to bless you. And they have all these testimonials of how they're blessed. When you do contrary to God's word, you are not blessed. The curse caused this shall not come, Proverbs says. It might not come as fast as you think. Or it might come so fast you don't know what to think. However, if you rightly divide the word of truth, if you study to show yourself approved unto God, God will show you these things. I know people that collect all kinds of, of superstitious, I'll call it, things. Things that they think have power. There is the power of God. And there's also things that have power denying godliness, denying righteousness. And those things are against God. Now, some of you want to want, know all about witchcraft that has no power. And some of you come from places where you know people put curses on people. Okay? And it's not okay. Okay? What I'm letting you know, that if there's power to something, and it's not glorifying God, it's outside of the knowledge of God, it's outside of the eternal purpose of God, and inside his curse, inside his judgment. You don't want that. I see people who collect skulls or collect this and that, so that they think that the power of that is going to help them. The children of Israel did that. We're going to do what this God does for this nation because their God helps them win, win wars. We, God's people, we're not being an abomination on purpose. We think it's a good idea. We need to go with the word of God to have a God idea. Because we go stupid and we don't see it. We don't recognize it. Remember in the word of God, stupid is the fool. The fool that believes his own mind and only those that agree with him. When you look at um, the twin tribes, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, I'm pretty sure it's Ephraim. They could always agree with their selves. However, they were so often outside of the love of God. They're the ones that, that if you can't say Sibboleth and you say Shibboleth, and I might have it backwards, look up the scripture. 
They kill you. They're brethren. And they they were all okay with it because everybody around me, you know, all, all us Ephraimites, we agree together. We agree together. You know, the seven churches in the book of Revelation, I remind you of this often. Each church had a different revelation of Jesus Christ. And what he rebuked them for was not the revelation he had of them. Uh, I mean, pardon me, that they had of him. And with a different revelation of Jesus Christ, at the end of what he says to each of the churches, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You need to hear what your brother has to say. And that's even if it's wrong, so that you can know if it's a mote and a beam, what to do with it. Or so that you can be like Aquila and Priscilla, who, who pulled, um, I hope I say his name right, Ananias aside, to expound the word of God to him more perfectly. They didn't sit him down. They pulled him aside and they gave him the word of God more perfectly because the scripture says he was eloquent. We make up rules. That's what Jesus called the religious leaders of his day. He called them fools for making up rules on things God said what he meant and meant what he said. And God is his own best commentary. And it's foolishness. When we make up all these rules and we only want to hear ourselves. And I'm, I used Ephraim, God's tribe, God's people, as an example. And one of the other examples that I'll use for you, since we don't recognize ourselves when, if I'm the one doing it, I don't know that I'm doing it. I'm not trying to go outside of God's word. I want to be so in his word that it would just adjust my heart, adjust my mind, or even stop my mouth if I'm saying something that's not so. And and if I forget to go read the thing that I'm referring to. These are the things that you want to do so that you're not overthrowing the faith of some. So that I'm not overthrowing anyone's faith with vain janglings, with more ungodliness. No, I want to build. And if you see Jesus, if your relationship with Jesus is different than mine, I, I I want to receive you. And I'm not talking about compromising born of a virgin, walked fully God, fully man, died on the cross for our sins. I'm not talking about the one that this, in Second Timothy, uh, no resurrection. Oh yes, he rose. And not only did he rise, but he went down into the depths of hell took the keys. The scripture lets us know a whole lot without letting us know everything. I'm not talking about compromising that doctrine of Jesus the Christ into some other wishy-washy stuff, stupid stuff, that draws us away from the truth. Because right now we are living in times when people who are ordained to bring God's word, people who we are supposed to be able to hear and listen to, are going astray, are teaching wrong. 
people who we've known to be faithful in prophecy are now prophesying what I call prophesying. And we need to be full of the word for the word to stand up in us and for us to have a heart of compassion, for us to want to snatch them from the fire, as another scripture says, knowing that that could be us. We are so living in these times. Now, there's never a time when it wasn't like that. This scripture, this is New Testament scripture from almost 2,000 years ago, okay, or more than. And that's what was going on in those times. However, you will recognize the cycle of times where things are elevated, where these kinds of things are elevated. And I, I want to warn you, in, in Luke, Jesus says, the law, the prophets, the Psalms. And I know most of us don't stay in the word enough to know that he's not talking about the book of Psalms. The law, the prophets, the Psalms, or Moses, the prophet, the Psalms. The Psalms, what Jesus gave us right there, is the Hebrew canon order of scripture. Most of us learned it in Sunday school or whatever our denomination is or whatever our Bibles are, all the translation of our Bibles. Most of us don't know that we learned it out of order. What does that do? I'm going to give you an example and I hope it's easy enough, but for some of it's going to be too hard. Right now, you can look at a clock and you know what time it is by where the hands are. Because you already know the order of the numbers. And even if somebody put the numbers out of order and put the three at the top where there's usually 12 and put two at the bottom where there's usually six, you'd still know what time it is because you know the order. So even with the scriptures out of order, what I call Roman order, because it was Rome that did that, political stuff, Mm -hmm. when one of the emperors of Rome came to the Lord Jesus Christ and yet the strong religion of the sun god was the major religion in order to compromise and bring us all together and the compromise and not offend Christ and not offend the sun gods and the people, the majority of Rome who believed in the sun god. Oh, what we did is the compromise that we still go with today and don't know where we got it from. The first day of the week, Sunday, so that everybody's happy. The Christians are happy and the sun god folk are happy. <laughs> compromise. You don't know what it's done to your faith. We don't know how that made it okay to use an order of scripture that's other than the Hebrew canon. And when you read the Hebrew canon, here's something I want to let you know. You might want to go now and read First and Second Chronicles. And I mean take time to read First and Second Chronicles. Because we know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's First Timothy, I believe. Let me check. <laughs> I know it by heart. However, since I'm reminding us. All scripture is given. Yeah. Oh, 2 Timothy 3.16. I went and said 1 Timothy. I know that by heart. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness. And I actually want to go to the entire verse. For time's sake, I'm not. You go to it. I'm telling you that because I'm telling you to read First and Second Chronicles. That is what the Hebrew canon ends with. That's the end of the Old Covenant. 
you will recognize how it's similar to Matthew in going back to the beginning of time, the beginning of creation, the beginning of man, where God lets us know some things and maybe we didn't notice. I share it with you often that when God in creation, he started, he said heaven and earth. When he deals with man, he says earth and heaven. There are some things and authority that he gave us in earth and heaven. And the end of the Hebrew canon, the end of that covenant that we didn't know was the end, first and second chronicles, goes back in names, all, all these names. Don't skip the names. All scripture, scripture is given by inspiration of God. And yeah, it's long. It's about 10 chapters. Uh, it pauses at one of them and then for a few verses and then picks up a whole bunch more names. I will let you know one of the things that God taught me is when you look up at the definition of the names, it lets you know the type of kingdom and the type of realm, the type of influence and affluence that that thing has. And that's whether it's a good influence or a bad influence so that you know how to protect yourself if it's foolishness and you know how to walk in it if it's something God ordained. You know if it takes time, like the time from uh, God's promise when the children of Israel through Joseph came into Egypt and when through Moses... A few hundred years, they come out of Egypt. God didn't forget his promise. However, if you have the promise, you might need to know the word of God, rightly divide the word of truth, to know that it's going to be time. To know how it says in the faith chapter that some died without receiving the promise. Some died. And that's not just from Joseph to Moses. Some of us have promises. I'm a promise. My grandfather's grandfather made a covenant with God for our family to come out from under a curse that he recognized and said to this generation that there would be salvation. And God told him, yes. (laughs) And I love that when I heard about it uh, from my grandfather, because that was my grandfather's grandfather that made that covenant. I was not looking for Jesus. I was not looking for God. I was looking to prove that there was no such thing as God. And if it was, he left a long time ago. And here I'm up here translating from Coptic to English, the Pentateuch. And I'm seeing how, wow, I used to say back then, if there was a God like this, this God is boss. If there was a God, he'd be like this. I'd serve a God like that. And then when the person who led me to Jesus Christ gave me a Bible, (laughs) and it wasn't a study Bible, it was just, that's when I found out. I I didn't learn it, um, how Jeremiah said, God, you tricked me. I got saved during a revival, and I heard the preacher say it, and and God had already taught me to look it up, read it. I'm letting you know, read it. I'm letting you know, read first and second chronicles it lets you know about people of excellence people who are ordained people who are called of god and how they'll do so well and then yet go so wrong we are living in those times and we don't want to believe if we could believe this prophet and now all of a sudden they said one thing yesterday and now they're saying something else today or when they they preach the word so good or one He's, they're preaching the word so good, except for the one particular thing they've taught wrong for the whole time I've been saved. And, and, and say, God won't give you, give you sickness when God in Deuteronomy, he let you know, I'll give it to you. I heard a rabbi say uh, a few weeks ago that God didn't tell Moses uh, to send out the 10. He was looking at, at uh, Deuteronomy too. I think he said. A rabbi, someone who helped translate scripture even. And I don't, I'm not talking about um, olden scripture. I'm talking about in, in our time. And yet, in Numbers 3, God says more than once that he told Moses to go send out the, send out the spies, to go send them out. It's right there in the word. And yes, you ought to respect the rabbi. Yes, you should. Yes, we should. You also want to know when the error is made. 
because it increases to more ungodliness and it can overthrow the faith of some. Through faith we understand. Through faith we understand. And you can understand stupid stuff to know that it's stupid. Foolish stuff so that you won't be the fool. I was looking at it today. Uh, uh, I think it's Proverbs 25 where it says uh, not, to, not to even, sp- don't answer a fool. But then the very next verse says, answer a fool. Because the circumstances are different. One place, one verse is letting you know that you, you don't answer a fool. <sighs> Actually, I think it's Proverbs 25. I, I, don't, I'm, I hope I'm not going to be sorry that I took the time. But he tells you, one. you look it up. One place he lets you know to answer a fool so that he doesn't, Proverbs 25. Oh, I should have looked it up the other way. That lets me know don't even take the time because I don't want to go over time. I want us to know that God tells us yes and no at the same time. That particular one verse, next verse. One is to answer a fool and, and, and he's talking about fools in leadership. Abigail's husband he was a fool. Nabal, as his name meant. And yet he was in charge. And and people knew. I want us to know we're living in times where people who are ordained and we've seen them do good work. And I'm not talking about the man that we just dissed either. The man that we just ugh, destroyed his memory. We did, not God. We did. I'm letting you know, read first and second chronicles so that you understand what God was letting us know. Jesus, when he said the law, the prophet, the Psalms, that what we're coming into, into the new covenant. We right now are living in these times where we want to rightly divide the word of truth. Show ourselves approved unto God. So that we're not ashamed. God doesn't give shame. And he doesn't give blame. He does hold us accountable. And responsible. Don't be stupid.